that Brian Walsh will walk into a Boston courtroom and be arraigned on charges for murdering his wife. This is a live look inside the courtroom. You can see the prosecutor for the Commonwealth sitting down there, the same prosecutor um, that handled the arraignment the first time around for Walsh, Lynn Bellin. Well, we do not see the defendant yet, but uh, as you can see, the uh, the security very heavy there as they uh, prepare to bring him in. And an arraignment uh, is is very usually very quick. Uh, there are several people likely being arraigned this morning in front of this judge. That's why you see there be several attorneys in the courtroom. Uh, having been in many of these. They'll bring him in first. The judge will want to get rid of him as soon as possible and uh, clear out uh, his or her courtroom because uh, there's immense interest in this uh, around the country. This case uh, has uh, captured a lot of people's attention. Anna Walsh went missing New Year's Day and has not been found since. Uh, we don't know actually if, if they did find her body because uh, they this, the search for her ha has continued over the past few weeks and then yesterday they pulled the trigger on the murder charge. So does that mean they found her body or does that mean um, they just decided as a unit to go ahead and prosecute without a body? Still with us, watching along with us in Silver Spring, Maryland, is trial attorney Michelle Thomas and in New York, criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor Marie Pereira. And uh, my apologies if I cut you off, either one of you, uh, once they get uh, up and running here in Boston. Um, again, Marie, your thoughts on what uh, what to expect today? It's going to be short and sweet. Basically, charge him with what they're charging him, make him out to be maybe a flight risk, and try to get bail. That's what the DA is going to do. And his lawyer is going to say he's not a flight risk. He has community ties, and basically, he will come back and face the charges. He's not going to run away. It's about proving his um, willingness to come back and face the charges. They're not trying him there. So there are going to be two, two, two sides, bail or no bail. That's what they're going to be doing here. Right now, he has a $500,000 bail set that he did not meet uh, on the other charges of misleading investigators as they looked for uh, his wife, Anna. And now, Michelle, uh, things are ramped up considerably when you're facing a charge of murder. No bail would seem very, very uh, real. Uh, as a possibility. Oh, let's uh, go into court here. We see uh, everybody standing up as the judge takes the uh, bench. Uh, let's uh, listen in. Yes, good morning. Good Okay, obviously they're waiting for Walsh to arrive in the court room, and uh, here he is. Mr. Walsh, on complaint 230318, you are charged on the first day of January 2023 with assault and to beat Anna Walsh with intent to murder that person. You're also charged with returning of a body, did without lawful authority, did willfully dig up or remove human remains. Not guilty, please, in the end. You understand those charges, Mr. Walsh? I do. I'll hear from the Commonwealth. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Um, we're not contesting bail or probable cause, so we would ask that he be released. Thank you, Ms. Lyon, but I have to satisfy myself with probable cause. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Lynn B. Lane for the Commonwealth. The defendant is now before the court charged with murder of his wife, Anna Walsh, as well as dysentery of her body. Anna was 39 years old and the mother of three children, two, four, and six. Anna worked in Washington, D.C., splitting her time weekdays between D.C. during the week and uh, staying in her house in Cohasset, where she lived with the defendant and their three kids. 
on January 4th of 2023, Cahasset Police received um, a call from her Washington, D.C. employee indicating that she was missing. Um, she was due to report uh, to work on January 4th, but did not appear. She had a flight on January 3rd from Logan to D.C., which she did not board. Cahasset Police went to their house at Chief Justice Cushing Highway for a well-being check. It was only at this time well, when they met with the defendant that he first reported his wife missing. Defendant stated his wife left the house at approximately 6 a.m. on January 1st, New Year's Day. He stated she took an Uber or a lift uh, to go to the airport, that she was turning to D.C. for work. Records were checked and there were no Uber or lifts to that house on January 1st. Defendant said he had not spoken uh, to his wife since the early morning hours on New Year's Day. Cahasset police were granted permission to Bing um, on his phone to locate her or her phone. Anna's phone indicated that it was stationary in the area of the Cahasset house on New Year's Eve until 3.14 a.m. on January 2nd. There were no outgoing calls made at that time, and at 3.14 a.m. on the 2nd, it was turned off. Defendant stated Anna should have been wearing a dress, a black jacket, hunter boots, watch, ring, as well as carrying a Prada purse. Defendant gave a timeline of 6 or 6.10 a.m. on the 1st when he last saw her. What I'd like to do now is just describe his actions in the days from January 1st. Defendant indicated on January 1st uh, at 3 p.m. he did some errands and he went to his mother's house in Swamps but, but got lost um, because he didn't have his phone. He said he knew it was lost when he saw the pirate ship on Route 1. Defendant stated stayed 15 minutes, then went to Whole Foods and CVS. Surveillance was checked and he did not enter either of those stores. On January 1st, first, defendant Googled using his son's iPad. Some of the searches are as follows. Keep in mind that the defendant said he left at 6 a.m. At 4.55 a.m. on January 1st, he searched how long before a body starts to smell. At 4.58 a.m., how to stop a body from decomposing. At 5.20 a.m., he searched how to embalm a body. At 5.47 a.m., 10 ways to dispose, dispose of a dead body if you really need to. At 6.25 a.m. on the 1st, how long for someone to be missing to inherit. At 6.34 a.m. on the 1st, can you throw away body parts? At 9.29 a.m., what does formaldehyde do? At 9.34 a.m. on the 1st, how long does DNA last? At 9.59 a.m., can identification be made on partial remains? At 11.34 a.m., dismemberment and the best ways to dispose of a body. At 11.44, how to clean blood from wooden floor. At 11.56 on the 1st, luminol to detect blood. At 1.08, what happens when you put body parts in ammonia? At 1.21 p.m., is it better to throw crime scene clothes away or wash them? Those were on the January 1st. There was also information gained from the defendant's phone, which showed on January 2nd, he was at Home uh, Goods in Norwell, where he purchased three rugs. There were also more Google searches on January 2nd. At 12.45 p.m., uh, Cap saw the best tool to dismember. At 1.10 p.m., can you be charged with murder without a body? At 1.14 p.m., can you identify a body without, with broken teeth? On January 2nd, following those, uh, the defendant uh, was seen on surveillance at the Home Depot in Rockland. In checking the surveillance, the defendant is observed on a security camera pushing a cart. Items included cleaning products, mops, brushes, tape, top, type, um, a Tyvek suit with boot covers, buckets, goggles, baking soda, a hatchet. He had a face mask and rubber gloves on at the time he was pushing the cart in Home uh, Depot. At 5.32, he was seen at the Jordan Street in Hingham, now removing the gloves and the mask. Uh, data from his phone also tracked his whereabouts on January 3rd. Uh, locations uh, were traveled at 
27 on January 3rd to an apartment complex in Abington. Surveillance shows the defendant's Volvo, as well as a male fitting the defendant's appearance, exit a car near the dumpster. He walks to the dumpster carrying a garbage bag. He's leaning and it appears to be heavy as he has to heft it, heft it into the dumpster. He walks to the dumpster with the uh, garbage bag uh, and leaves it. On 448, he hit another complex in Abington and at 5.10 p.m., cell phone shows records at another apartment in Brockton. Video shows um, a party consistent with uh, his appearance and his Volvo. Again, he discarded items in the dumpster. On January 3rd, that same day, at 1.02 p.m., he did some more uh, Google searches. What happens to hair on a dead body? At 1.13 p.m., what is the rate of decomposition of a body found in a plastic bag compared to on a surface in the woods? At 1.20 p.m., can baking soda mask or make a body smell good? On January 4th, uh, the following day, the defendant went to Home Goods in TJ Maxx. He purchased towels as well as bath mats and men's clothing. At 4.15 that day on the 4th, he went to Lowe's where he purchased squeegees and a trash can. On January 4th, when Cassett police went to the house uh, on the well-being check, officers observed his Volvo with seats down and a plastic liner in the back of the car. The next day, a view of the Volvo showed his seats folded down, floor mats with some dirt, and the carpet appeared to show fresh vacuum streaks. When asked about the line, the defendant said he threw in the trash. Chemists uh, later uh, analyzed the car, and there was present blood in the car. On January 5th, a review of the data from the defendant's phone showed his phone traveled at 8 a.m., first to his daycare and then to Swampscott, where his mother resides. The phone traveled to the complex where his mother lives at 9.30 a.m., went for about five minutes around the building to the southeast corner. In the southeast corner of that complex uh, is where there was a dumpster. The dumpster was later uh, secured and searched. On January 8th, police and crime scene services searched the house in Cahasset. They found blood in the basement, a knife with the presence of blood, the knife was damaged. A second knife was also found in that basement. In addition, there was heavy duty, large top, plastic liners purchased from that Home Depot. For As part of the investigation, uh, police checked for activity on honest credit cards, banks, flights, trains. There was no activity um, since she was last seen on January 1st. Uh, police also tried to track down what happened to the bags that the defendant was seen throwing in the dumpster earlier. Um, this was over in Abington. These bags and what was in them were already picked up and taken to a location for shredding and to being cast incinerated. By the time police located that, they were already destroyed. However, investigators did secure and search the dumpsters from uh, defendant's mother's complex in Swampskit. It was searched at a transfer station in Peabody. Investigators recovered 10 trash bags. Inside the trash bags, many of these items contained uh, stains uh, consistent with blood, in fact, a lot. Among the items secured were towels, rags, slippers, tape, Tyvek suit, gloves, cleaning agents, carpets, rugs, hunter boots, Prada purse, a COVID-19 vaccine card in the name of Anna Walsh, a hacksaw, a hatchet, and some cutting shears. The purse and boots were described as what Anna was last seen in. A portion of the rug was heavily stained with red-brown stains. The substance was consistent with also having baking soda on it. There was a portion of a necklace consistent with one that Anna had been seen wearing in photos. The state crime lab performed testing on certain selected items that were uh, recovered from those trash bags. There was human blood on found found on them, and then they were sent for DNA testing. The findings were as follows. On the slippers in the interior, Anna and Brian Walsh were contributors to the DNA on those slippers, which had blood on them. On the exterior, Anna and Brian Walsh contributed to the DNA found on those slippers. The Tyvek suit. On the interior cuffs, Anna and Brian Walsh 
contributed to the DNA that was left on them. On the exterior, partially, on the exterior left pant leg, Anna Walsh was contributed to the DNA. On the interior right sleeve, Anna Walsh was uh, a contributor to the DNA that was found on the uh, Tyvek suit. There was tissues which found that Anna Walsh contributed to the DNA. Uh, there was one other earlier Google search, which would be of note. On December 27th, defendant Googled, what's the best state to divorce for a man? Rather than divorce, it is believed that Ryan Walsh dismembered Anna Walsh and discarded her body. The bags were later discarded in Swampscott and contained uh, Anna's property and the items used to clean up, as well as the DNA that was left behind. The Commonwealth is asking that the defendant be held without bail for the murder of his wife. Thank you. Can we be heard at all? No, Your Honor. Thank you. The defendant will be held without bail pending indictment. Do we have a date for probable cause? Or are we doing it? Is there a time for the grand jury? Not at this time, but I will. Um, Your Honor, we have a uh, date of February 7th already for the um, receiving police. February 9th. That's it? Oh, February 9th. I apologize. Uh, if we want to put on the status on that day. And that's by Zoom, Your Honor, correct? By Zoom. Yes, thank you. Status date or probable cause date? Status date is fine, Your Honor. February 9th for status, please. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. So, sir, you held without bail until February 9th. 2023 for a status date. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, Brian Walsh uh, being arraigned on murder charges for the death of his wife, Anna. And uh, like the last time he appeared in court, the prosecutor, uh, Lynn Bellin uh, detailed a lot of the evidence that the state has against him, and boy, the Google searches. He used his son's iPad, so I figured that it may be in his mind that uh, that was um, not going to get him in trouble. Well, guess what? Um, they were able to detail crazy searches about, you know, decomp, decomp on, on a body. Uh, if it's in a plastic bag, does that change the rate of it? Ten ways to dispose of a body when you really need to. What does ammonia do to a body part? How to stop decomposition? How long does a body smell? On and on and on. Um, Michelle Thomas, Marie Pereira with us, watching along with us. Um, Michelle, this seems like they got the goods on uh, old Brian Walsh. Ted, that was an overwhelming amount of evidence that the state has to present at trial. Um, they went into such a detail regarding those internet searches. And like I was saying earlier, this is someone who believed he could outsmart the investigators and the authorities using his son's iPad to conduct his investigation or his, his internet searches, but none of that works. And you can see that the state really um, went deep into their investigation. They have a lot of evidence to convict this defendant. Uh, when I was listening, I, I didn't hear, and correct me if I'm wrong, maybe you guys picked it up, uh, Lynn Below, she does speak very quickly uh, with that Boston accent. Um, I didn't hear a body part being found, but the, the Tyvek suit was apparently found. There's DNA that it was on some slippers that were found, um, tying, that with, with, you know, had Anna's profile on it along with, with Brian's. Um, so maybe they have not found uh, a body. I don't know, did you hear anything about body parts actually being found, Marie? I didn't hear anything about body parts being found, but oh my God, the details. I think this is going to be a slam dunk case. And he's standing, like I said, on a banana peel next to the coffin of conviction, wearing oil slicked shoes. He's done, oh my God. The uh, Also, they looked at uh, Anna's activity, there was no, um, surveillance of her. She did not use her credit card during this period of time. They did find that blood on the knife, a damaged knife in the house when they searched on January 8th. Uh, his vehicle his vehicle was traced uh, where he went on January 3rd to an apartment and he had to heft, as she said, the large plastic garbage bag into a dumpster at an apartment complex. Then he went to three, in all, three different department um, apartment complexes and use dumpsters at all of them and we have seen video of them 
searching the transfer station uh, up in Massachusetts where presumably this trash was taken to and that uh, what, what they found there obviously was, was part of what was discussed today including those slippers and the Tyvek suit with the DNA. Uh, Michelle, this, uh, I, you know, the Kohlberger uh, affidavit was pretty solid but whew, just takes it to a whole other level. I mean just the internet searches, I mean and one of them, this one really got me. Um, can you ID a body with broken teeth? Ugh. Your thoughts? Yeah, that, yeah it, this is the, the depth with which this defendant most likely thought this crime out. I mean, he went into such detail, thought about every possible angle to cover his tracks, so to speak. It is disturbing to know that this this woman was was married to someone with that this type of criminal mind. Um, he went into um, you know, like to your point, he covered everything. The, the how did bodies decompose and um, whether they whether you encase them in a plastic bag if that changes the body. I mean, it's really really disturbing. And you know, there's yes, this may be a circumstantial evidence-based case to your point they may not have the body but there's so much here to work with that i really do think it's a slam dunk for the state yeah and uh, just a heartbreaker too the kids are in child uh, protective custody two four and six are their ages anna walsh was 39 years old uh, when she was killed allegedly on new year's day by the defendant her husband um brian walsh He's back in court February 9th, status hearing there. It sounds like that's going to be on Zoom. And uh, from, from a defense perspective, uh, Marie, you want to put as much time in between what the public has heard, the jury pool has heard today, and an actual trial. This won't go for many, many, many months. I don't think this is going to go long because they have an abundance amount of evidence. Mm. And I don't see how defense is going to fix this. What they need to do is try to make it seem like it was a crime of passion, that it happened suddenly. But the post-guilt pre-planning activity doesn't help him. They have really an uphill battle with this case, his defense team. Mm. And, and do you think this is a, you know, if, if you're representing him, Michelle, you're thinking, um, you know, light at the end of the tunnel, uh, do 30, what have you, second, if you can get a second, I don't, I don't know, it just seems bleak, bleak at this point. Um, did, do you think a, a plea would be in the cards? Yeah, this is the kind of case where you talk strongly to your client about considering a plea and trying to negotiate some sort of plea deal with the state. I, to Marie's point, I don't know how the defense is going to overcome this overwhelming amount of evidence that ties him directly to the crime, even without the body of the victim. So uh, they, he should certainly think long and hard about how he can mitigate these, his um, sentence and try to negotiate a plea deal if possible. Mm -hmm. All right, he'll be back February 9th, but uh, what a morning it was. Brian Walsh, the avalanche of evidence uh, unleashed by the prosecutor there in the courtroom. We'll get a break in here.